Hello everyone and welcome to the History Unicorn, Reddit Finds. Today we are exploring the world of the paranormal from the subreddits, r slash supernatural encounters, r slash paranormal encounters, and r slash paranormal. Links to the original posts are in the description below. Let's dive in and find out exactly what strange encounters are out there. There's a road, in my county in Ohio known as Crybaby Lane. According to one of the haunted Ohio books, a young mother who was a university student hung her baby from the tree. I've been down it many times before, and after the experience and never heard anything, seen anything, or got an eerie feeling. What happened took place after leaving the road. One of my brothers and I went down the road about six years ago to see if we could hear anything or see anything. We're both familiar with the area, as I've spent most of my life in this county. We went down the road as normal. Nothing happened until we was getting ready to go home. We turned onto another road, which should have taken us back to Route 6. So we could head home, no matter what way we turned, we couldn't seem to find the road we needed. Now my brother wasn't one to mess around, and play tricks or act like we were lost. So I know this was something odd. About after 10 minutes of not being able to find Route 6. We finally reached the intersection of Route 6 and the current road, we was on. We didn't really freak out, because not too much scares us. Just a bit concerned, when we couldn't seemingly find Route 6. Before turning on to 6. We just kinda looked at each other and shrugged it off. I don't know what to call that experience, never had it happen before or after that night. No time was missing or anything like that. Here are some of the comments from this post. Trulez commented. There is a crushing supernatural energy to this story. Like by the first paragraph, I could feel it making it hard for me to breathe. Some oppressive force must have been trying to keep you within its domain. OP responded to Trulez. That does make sense, if that's what was happening. Then it wasn't powerful enough to keep us there. Trulez responded to OP. That all through luck or patience you managed to muscle through. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think was keeping OP and his brother in the area? I figure it's probably nothing, but has anyone else woken up and had three scratch marks on their back? That goes from the base of their neck to about the middle of their back, on the right side. It goes away after about a week each time. It happens about once a year for me. Usually during the time seasons change, but not at the same time every year. I know it's not from my animals, because I don't sleep with them. And I know it's not my girlfriend, as it appears in the exact same location, each time. And started occurring way before I had a girlfriend. I will always have a very vivid dream at least a day before, or after the marks show up, and the dream always entails nuclear disaster or some type of apocalypse. It first started in the middle of summer, when I was younger. About 8 or 9 and after I remember going outside with my family and neighbors, to watch a bring green object drop multiple white glowing objects, out of the back of it. As it passed over our city. I finally asked my parents about this memory and they swear up and down that it was just a dream that I had, and was not real life. The markings never hurt, and whenever they show up. I always look to see maybe if I slept on something that would make them appear. I don't use drugs, and I am a social drinker. But nothing over the top. Just seeing if anyone else has any experiences like this. Here are some of the comments, from this post. Stop N Swap 2 commented. No, but on two occasions I've had three scratch marks appear on the back of my neck. Literally near that same location. They weren't scratches, but raised welts in my skin, the shape of three claw marks. OP responded to stop in swap 2. I'd say that's how I would describe mine, but they definitely don't welt up. Average Jane 2614 also commented. If the scratches are together, then it's supposed to be demonic. I know you said it happens during the change of seasons, but I'm wondering if it's a full moon. I would cleanse your home? OP responded to Average Jane 2614. Never really thought about that. It's def been something that's followed me, moving between states and from house to house. 
Hosanna 07 responded to Average Jane 2614. Cleanse won't do anything, but make it worse. Average Jane 2614 responded to Hosanna 07. Cleansing works well for me, and other fellow mediums. Hosanna 07 responded to OP. You're being attacked by demons. OP responded to Hosanna 07. To be fair, I am not against this idea. I just wish I could record it, when around the time it happens. In the comments below, let me know what you think is attacking OP. Is it demons, or one of their furry friends? The Hat Man Hunted Me Backstory, 5 to 8 years old and I grew up in a chaotic household, with a drunk father. The first set of dreams, the first set of dreams didn't have the hat man in them, but were certainly related. I don't remember too much of these dreams, but it consisted of a little girl with pitch black eyes. Who tried to gain my trust, and did. And led me to this house. I believe she was leading me to him. The house was creepy and caused me to yell. No. In my sleep. The hat man dreams, these dreams came directly after the first set. I remember these like this was yesterday. The setting was an old ranch, on a dirt road. I never went in the ranch, I only stayed on the dirt road. The ranch, however was always dark, built of old rustic wood. The ranch was to the right of me, and everything else around me was nothing but dirt. The first time I saw him, he stood far away with a top hat, a trench coat, and a shadow for a face. I stood in the dirt road motionless and scared for my life. He then immediately got really close, and tried to get me to go into his portal, on the ground. The portal was a circle and was maybe as big as the width of a car. I refused, and that's when he started to hurt me. He scratched me, and I would wake up with scratched in real life. He choked me, and I could feel the sensation of being choked, in real life. He would come back night after night after night, to try and get me into his portal. Inside his portal was pure darkness, nothing to see, just black. The setting never changed throughout the dreams. Always just a ranch on a dirt road. After nights of terror and waking up in pain, with scratches and being choked. I decided tonight, I wouldn't be scared of him and hopefully he would go away. That night was the worst of all nights. He threw everything at me. Scratches, chokes, and inflicted pain in my body. He then dragged me into his portal, and I was only hanging on with two hands, with my feet dangling in his portal. In that moment I knew I couldn't be scared of him. So, I just hung there not screaming or fighting back, and I realized I wasn't scared anymore and he disappeared. When I woke up, when I woke up immediately after the dream, that I decided I wasn't going to be scared of him. I looked in my doorway. As a kid, I always shut the door before I slept. But this time it was cracked. I looked and I saw him, but he looked different this time. He had a brownish face, and you couldn't really make out a nose or a mouth. His eyes were silver or white, and he just stared at me for about a minute. He then just left and I haven't seen him since. Thank you for reading, let me know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think OP experienced? A nightmare or something more sinister? Last week, I visited family in Georgia, USA. It was in their home that I experienced my first shadow figure. I was sitting in my brother's living room, chatting with my sister-in-law, while she watched television. From where I was sitting, I had a clear view of their dining room. Out of the corner of my eyes, something in that room kept getting my attention. But by the time I turned to look, there was nothing there. So I put my all, my attention on that room. And within a minute, I saw a large, shadow figure with arms and legs against the back wall. It then quickly moved across the room and into the hallway that led to that room. I quickly sat up and looked behind me, to the left, at the front door. That door has glass panels on either side of it, that run along the length of the door. If someone was walking outside, I thought, approaching the house. That might be the source of what I was seeing. There was no one outside, nor could anyone walking outside, at that hour, project a full shadow into the interior of the home. My mind registered the fact that I'd just experienced my first shadow person. I said nothing about what I'd seen, to my sister-in-law. I doubted she would believe me, and if she did, what would hearing about a shadow figure, 
in her home due to her psyche. It wasn't my job to tell her that I thought her house to be haunted. We continued our conversation for a couple of minutes and then. Wham, we heard a loud noise from their bedroom. I looked at her, she looked at me and started toward the room. Now I'm a little spooked. I followed her down the hall. There, on the floor of their bedroom, was a metal water bottle that my brother uses. My sister-in-law explained that she placed that water bottle on the bench that backed up to one of the walls. She picked it up, put it back on the bench where she had set it previously, and quickly walked out of the room while making spooky sounds. I was spooked by this, to the point that I downloaded a flashlight app to my phone and kept that on as a nightlight for the next two nights. I was there for another few days and had no more experiences. Here are some of the comments from this post. Birutto P commented on this post. At least you had someone with you, your first time seeing one. My first time seeing one, I was sleeping in a bedroom my dad built in the basement. And I heard something go to the top of the steps and turn every light down there off. There was like a one foot tall and wide window at ground level and moonlight was shining in. That's the only way I was able to see. I woke up and saw about 40 orbs all over me, and I freaked out. And threw the covers off of me and got up panicking. Tried to turn the knob on my lamp, so I could see more than I realized it was both unplugged and the light bulb was taken out. As soon as I noticed that I hear a weird clicking growling sound. Then I look up, and it was squatted behind a toy box, staring at me with those flaming eyes. Fight or flight mode kicked in, and I growled back at it. And I never broke eye contact until I put the bulb back in my lamp and plugged it back in. And turned it on, then poof. It was gone. I was 16 then, I'm 25 now and have been seeing them ever since. HM, Brit responded to be rut OP. Oh my gosh, I love that you growled back. That is epic. Man, I wish I had balls like that. Unfortunately, I'd probably piss myself, then pass out. Birut OP responded to HM Brit. I was definitely scared. I never saw anything like that before. I'm sure they are the ones terrified now. Though that one probably went home and told all his friends. I still see them sometimes, and I'm just like oh hey with here. Checking up on me. HM Brit responded to Birut OP. Have you ever seen that thing again, that growled at you? Birut OP responded to HM Brit. Hatman didn't talk or make a sound though. He was just standing there, chilling with his shadow hands in his shadow pockets. I was like, oh hey, I've heard about you a lot, you're famous. Got my drink and left, he was still there when I walked off. Birut OP continues. I'm not sure if it was the exact same one, but I've seen similar ones. Seen the hat man once, when I was in a trailer park, buying something from a pop machine at night. The craziest one I saw was a female shadow person, with shoulder length hair and a nightgown. With the flaming eyes, but she had red electricity sparking all over her. I was playing a video game, she opened the door, and looked at me. And I looked at her, we locked eyes for about 20 seconds. Then she shut the door, and I never saw her again. Let me know what you think, in the comments below. Do you think OP saw a shadow figure? So me and my friends were at a party, and there was this soccer field. And we decided to sit in a circle and talk about our paranormal experiences. Then it was 12 am, and me and my friend felt something dark close to us, we are both sensitive to paranormal shit. As we feel it coming closer, we run inside. After a minute, I look outside and my heart stopped. What I saw was this big, tall, yet skinny shadow. It didn't walk, but it did move somehow. Scared as shit, I told my friends. But I didn't feel one presence. I felt two, and so did my friend. Looking outside again, we saw a second one, lurking in the corner. After a few minutes, we went checking again, but they are gone. And I didn't feel their presence anymore. Relieved, we went outside again, and at the end of the party. We stepped in the car to go home. When we felt them again, standing next to each other. They switched placing, but like teleporting. Praying that they would go away, my mom stepped in the car, at that moment. 
and we told her about it, but they were gone. This isn't made up. Please tell me what that was. Here is a comment from this post. Blood Seto commented. I've had a few similar experiences, and Steph Young mentions a couple encounters. Like this in one of her books, about the woods. If I remember correctly, the pair ran back to their campsite, and just built up the fire like crazy. While the entities moved around the perimeter of the firelight. My best guess is they're related to shadow people, somehow. Let me know what you think, in the comments below. What do you think OP saw? The stories so far have been head scratchers and a little chilling. If you're enjoying this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more in our paranormal series or any of our series, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to never miss a future video. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously, or I can give you a shout out, just let me know your preference in the email. Share in the comments, what you think about the encounters we've discussed so far. So when I was about 8 to 10 years old, can't remember exactly. Me and my family were on Disneyland Paris. In the hotel that belonged to Disneyland. I decided to sleep alone, in the living room. Because my little brother was annoying me. I woke up in the middle of the night. And right in front of me was a very tall, black shadow. I looked to the right, and I saw an all-white grey man. He looked like a ghost, that you see in movies. I closed my eyes again, opened them and he was still there. I remember I started crying because it was so scary. I lifted my arm to cover my eyes, and when I removed it, he was still there again. I looked at him, back and forth and he was just there, staring at me. I remember he looked like an old man, and he had a cowboy hat. He made a very scary sound, that sounded like a silent growl. I just laid there for a few hours, covering my face with my arm. And uncovering it seeing if was still there. And he always was. I finally got the courage to turn on the light, and he disappeared. The next day went on like normal. When we went to look at the castle. I heard the same kind of sound he made very clearly. I asked my parents if they heard it, and they said no. I really believe I saw some kind of thing that wasn't a shadow person. Have anyone else had experiences like this? I haven't had a moment like this since that day. I've only seen shadow people in my room, at night. But never an all white thing like him. And he was so clear, and real looking. It freaked me out for weeks after. Here are some of the comments, from this post. Ace of Mace commented. Was he moving at all? There's been times that objects look like people, with the lights out. If it wasn't moving, I'd wonder if it was something like that. Did you turn the lights back out? If so, was he there again? OP responded to Ace of Mace. He was moving, his eyes blinked and his mouth moved. He was standing just beside my bed, with his face like 40 centimeters from mine. When I turned the lights on, I just ran to my parents' room, and slept with them instead. Ace of Mace responded to OP. Yikes! How did you manage to lay there for so long, without freaking out? OP responded to Ace of Mace. I think I was just paralyzed from all the fear. I remember I started crying because it was so horrifying. I just laid there for so long, wishing he could just disappear. Then I was like. Okay come on, come you can do this. When I turned on the lights. Luckily the light switch was beside the bed, so I didn't have to leave the bed and stand up, in the dark. Ace of Mace responded to OP. Yeah, that would have been horrifying, especially if he was standing between you and the light switch. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think OP saw? Was it an entity or just part of the Magic Kingdom? This is gonna be a lengthy one, but I figured I would share everything I can remember about the things I saw. Since I was little, I would see things that I now know are paranormal. The earliest memory I have of these encounters is, when I was six or seven. My family used to live in a relatively new house, in Indiana. Now I don't know the history of the area, all I know is that there is a wooden bridge down the road, from the house that dates back to the 1920s-1930s. Anyway, 
when I think back to the time we were at that house. The only thing that pops in my head, is the green-eyed man. The green-eyed man, was a tall shadow figure with glowing green eyes. I would frequently wake up around 2 to 3 in the morning. Wide awake, and I would see this figure standing at the end of the hallway, from my bedroom door. It would just stand there, most of the time. And then just, disappear into the wall next to it. However, there was one night, I woke up and it was dead silent, and it was cold. I turned over to look out the doorway and that figure was standing next to my bed, looking down at me. I was completely frozen at this point. I tried to scream, but it felt as if my breath was being taken from my chest. I wanted to run, but I couldn't move. So I just closed my eyes and said. Go away. I opened my eyes, and it was gone. I ran into my parents' room and slept at the end of their bed, that night. I tried to tell my parents, the next morning and they just thought that I was staying up too late. And that I need to stop watching scary movies with them. Every night, in that house. I always saw that figure in the same place. Even after moving, years later. I was certain that it followed, because I still saw it. It's been almost 10 years since I've seen it, but I saw this thing from age 6 or 7. All the way up to age 18, and it followed everywhere we went. I'm not sure as to what kind of spirit it was, but it made my life hell. Here are some of the comments from this post. Hot Dog commented. I tell my child that they are punks and pathetic. And that's why they pick on a child. Because they are cowards. They want you to be scared, but your love and bravery is what they are scared of. My child sees a hat man, and a girl with a dress shadow person. Also some scribble scrabble blob. All I've seen in the house once, was a bright yellow light in the shape of a tubular snowflake. Lasted 5 seconds and disappeared. Yabba Dabba Do Bad Things also commented. I had three paranormal occurrences that happened when I was younger. Same house, and it was crazy. My mom never made a big deal about it, but she admitted to me. As an adult, that I scared her. Also walked into an old liquor store, my mom was a regular. And this new employee looked at me, young cute kid, and told me I was a witch. In the comments below, tell me what you think about OP's experience. What do you think about the shadow person following OP? So back when I was in high school, I had lived in this house that had an aura to it. I always had horrible dreams, and I would feel the sense of being watched. To the point of sleeping two hours a night, with the overhead light blasting me in the face. I felt so unsafe, especially when I was home alone. I would always see a tall black figure, at the end of the hallway. Going upstairs, out of the corner of my eye. But anyways, the real part I was going to talk about. One day, I came home from school and I went upstairs to my room. My room at the time was painted blood red, great vibes. As soon as I stepped through the threshold of the door. It smelled like shit. The strongest smell of pure shit, and death. It was choking me, when I would walk in. The weird thing is, you would only smell it at all. When you entered my room? Not even if you were standing right in front of the threshold. You would have to pass it to be able to smell it. I had all my family go in, and see if they could smell it, and they all could. But only once they passed the threshold. It lasted all day, and disappeared the next morning. No trace of the smell. The only thing I noticed, was that the attic tile was pushed up and over with a small crack open to the attic. Which was closed the next time I checked. Nobody went in to close it, and my closet was full. No way to open the door, without trouble. Any opinions on this? Also my phone is not working properly, as soon as I started typing. Here are some of the comments, from this post. Akachula commented. The smell you described is typically associated with a demonic presence. However, since it only occurred once, I am not sure that was the cause. Had it been a demonic entity, you would have noticed frequently. Also, only happening in your room alone is very strange. It does happen but it is rare. That only one room is affected. The attic opening being ajar, and then being closed again the next day, might lead me to think that the entity you witnessed, may have come from the attic. I have attics with scuttle hole in closets, that are difficult to get at. 
but there are more than a single way to get out of an attic. Mine has the places to exit the attic, two are visible and the other is accessed from the attic. So it may be there was another way out for the entity. OP responded to Akachula. Yes, the smell only happened once. A few other things with another room in the house, included my dad's door, would only close on me. If I entered the room even with someone else, but it didn't happen if I didn't go in. And when I went in his closet, the only time I did the bar holding up all his clothes. Almost fell on my head, when I was looking under it, for a box. I definitely couldn't explain everything that I experienced, cause that would take a long time. I hope it wasn't demonic, but there was always something off. My grandmother used to wear Chanel number no. 5, and that has a very distinctive smell. I remember and I would sometimes smell it, but the presence would not be comforting. I used to assume it was something disguising maybe, but I honestly have no clue. Akachula responded to OP. I do not believe it was demonic, but it was a very dark presence. Are these events still occurring? OP responded to Akachula. Oh no, this was an old house, but it just never leaves my mind. And I've never reached out to hear what others think. I would hope it wasn't demonic, but my parents have always been superstitious. And they don't trust anything, so they always made me feel like it could be something, or I might be attracting something because I am inviting it in. When I automatically think it's bad. I guess I'm looking to just understand more about what happened through someone else's unbiased perspective. In the comments below, let me know what you think about OP's experience. What do you think caused the smell in OP's room, and what moved the attic hatch? While moored at Waianae Harbor, we would take our Greyhound for a run in the big field nearby. At the edge of the ocean, there is a small memorial area, for people lost at sea. Boaters and fishermen, and children drowned while swimming. With stones and lays, and name signs. We threw a tennis ball for our dog, and it rolled under the fence bordering this site. It disappeared into the grass, and we gave up on it. Not wanting to disrespect the memorials. But after a moment, the ball popped out of the grass, rolled back out under the fence. And up to our feet. There was nobody there. No slope. The ball came through the grass with momentum. Here are some of the comments from this post. I love music 19 commented. Sounds like a friendly spirit, returned the ball to you. OP responded to I love music 19. Why an I harbor is a special place. At night people go out fishing all night, and the families sit out by the boat ramp, and under the trees. The children play far into the night and people play ukuleles, and sing and cook food on hibachis. This used to be seen at Waikiki in the 60s, but not anymore. I'm sure that the Hawaiians have always done it. White Rhino 1982 responded to OP. I've lived in Hawaii twice now? Both places have seemed to have crazy things happening. But we have never felt afraid or threatened by it. The first time it was just toys moving, balls rolling from under couches, innocent stuff. A friend told us, in our house, an old man was there. She said he was friendly and seemed interested in our pets and child. The second time through our house is tucked back in the woods. Now we get more innocent things like food falling off counters, which makes our dogs happy, every so often, when the dogs and cats are watching TV with us late, we will hear a rumbling down the stairs. Like a child running down. When we look over, no one is there? But a dog or cat will happily run over and run up the stairs. They will typically stay there until we go to bed, then hop into bed with us. These Hawaii ghosts live that aloha life. OP responded to White Rhino 1982. The playful spirit seems to be Hawaiian thing. The balls rolling. We wondered if a child had drowned, in the ocean and its spirit wanted to play with our dog. White Rhino 1982 responded to OP. I've also heard stories from the area that when the water isn't safe, something strange happens to distract the person from going in. I think that the entire area is a pretty peaceful, happy place. OP responded to White Rhino 1982. It is. There's a self-governing homeless village hidden behind the harbor. It works. In the comments below, let me know what you think about OP's experience. What do you think toss the ball back to OP's dog? It was about 8.30 pm. 
While taking out the trash at work with a co-worker roommate, a large dog approached us. It seemed to be galloping. It wasn't walking normally, like an animal should. Despite the many surrounding lights, the dog appeared to be entirely black. It was silhouetted just enough that you could see its muscle definition. I could see a slight reflection in its eyes. It seemed to lack a shadow. My roommate, and I both expressed having different experiences and visions of the dog. When I initially saw the dog, I interacted saying, or, oh, dog. In excitement? For me, it proceeded to sit entirely still on the cement, staring, like a statue. What I saw was a large, fluffy, black dog. Lazy ears. Similar to a Newfoundland dog. My roommate expresses seeing the dog as a large, very muscular, aggressive looking black dog. That stood rigid the entire time, staring like it wanted to attack. It was short-haired, muscled, and had pointed ears. I jokingly stated that the dog looked like a skinwalker. Not really anticipating that anything would happen. Then we immediately felt a wake of dread fall over us. Something was wrong. We both saw the dog's jaw open, almost as if it was about to bark. We heard a distant yet extremely clear, high-pitched come here. The dog immediately turned to take off. We turned around the corner, the creature was unreasonably far up the road, for the short amount of time that it was not being observed. It was wobbling, crossing its paws, walking oddly. When it turned left around a corner, it seemed to nearly stand up on its hind paws. Walking on two legs, just before passing around out of sight, the rest of the night was just as interesting. We had trouble with certain objects slightly moving place. Nudging a bit. Settling. It quickly became more aggressive. But then, just as we were about to leave, we heard a loud and persistent knocking come from the front of the store. We quickly went to our cars. On the drive home, I tried to blast music and ignore what I had just seen. I heard whispering come from my back seat, I couldn't quite make out any words. It just sounded like whistling, almost. But get this. I saw a random antique clawfoot bathtub. On the left side of the road. In a field. It was certainly not there the day before. Or even that morning, on my drive there. The kicker. I was watching the sidelines of the roads for animals, and I most certainly saw a buck. He was leaping out in front of the road, a good 50 feet ahead. I slammed on my brakes, but when I got closer, it was merely a bush. Perhaps I was just paranoid, but this is all very concerning. Let me know what you think in the comments, what do you think OP saw? Was it a skinwalker? This has been a crazy ride, and I'll bring you any updates in future videos. If you've stuck with me until the end, you're amazing. If you want to catch more episodes in the Paranormal series, or any of my other series, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, to never miss a future video. If you enjoyed this content, smash the like button, and leave a comment down below. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously or I can give you a shout out, just let me know your preference in the email. Until next time, be safe out there. You never know what you might find.